What's up, everyone? I'm Brock with PDQ, and this is going to be episode 12 of our PDQ Connect Getting Started series. And today we're going to be talking about APIs, or otherwise known as the application programming interface, okay? Basically how you interface with an application. If you don't know, APIs are really cool. They provide a lot of robust features that you can kind of like take the API and use it to customize an application, in this case, PDQ Connect, to your needs, okay? And use it for all sorts of use cases. Some use cases that you might consider using it for would be connecting it to your ticketing system to help out your onboarding process. If there's just any process in general that you need help like automating, APIs are the answer. They can really help you automate away all those tedious tasks that you do. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into PDQ Connect and take a look at what we have available for you. Okay, so we're gonna find our API interface. Down here, we're gonna go to the gear icon to get to our settings page. And you'll see here that we have an API keys option. So at the API's key screen, this is gonna basically have everything you need to get up and started with the API. So here you, uh, you can see that we've already assigned a few API keys. We have one that's currently active. We've had a few that we've used for testing that we've since revoked, and you can get that information here. So when you're getting started, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to generate that API key. So we'll go up here, we'll click Create API Key. We'll call this one a Getting Started Series API. Okay, well, so we'll click Create on that. Now, I cannot stress this enough. We've got a big, bold warning here. When you generate this API key, you need to copy it down and put it somewhere safe. Um, because once you go past this screen, you will not be able to retrieve that API key, and you won't even be able to contact us to retrieve it for you because we won't even have access to it. So you can see here, if I click into this field, let's go ahead and show this API key. We've got our API key right here. You can, Control A, you can hit this copy to clipboard button, however you need to do it. Again, copy this down, save it somewhere safe so you have it for future use cases, okay? Because again, once you close out of the screen, it's there's no way to access it. You can see here we've got our API, but again, there's no way for me to go in and see that API key that was generated. Also, we can see who created the API key, which is useful. You know, you make sure that only the, the right people are generating these keys, revoking them, have access to them. You can see the status is active. You can see when it was created, okay? So when you are done with an API key, you have the revoke option here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and revoke this one that I just generated because I'm not gonna use it. If we'll revoke it, you'll see that now the status is gone. So that kind of keeps the history of the API keys that you've generated and revoked, and as well as the ones that are currently active, okay? The other thing you wanna see here is, right here we have a link to our uh, API documentation. So if we click on that, we go up to open link in a new tab. This is going to take us to our Swagger REST API documentation, okay? Now this is where you're gonna find all of your endpoints that you can uh, access and uh, manipulate with the API. So let's go over those really quick. We have our first, this is using the post method. Uh, this is our deployments endpoint. This is where you would actually, this is the one you would actually use to deploy applications via the API. The rest of these are all gonna be using the get method, okay? So we have the devices endpoint, which will return a list of devices. Uh, then you can dive into and get more specific by adding a specific device ID for this endpoint. So you can return information about that, just that one device. Here you can access the groups using the groups endpoint. These are gonna be the groups that are inside of PDQ Connect. Next, we've got our packages. So those packages that are pre-built by PDQ or those custom packages that you build yourself, you'll be able to list your packages here. And same thing, you can get more specific with the package ID, okay? Now each one of these, you can drop down and get some examples. You can get, you can kind of see what some expected responses would be from that uh, API call. So this has definitely, when you get started with the API, go through here, look at all these options and check them out. See what options you have available to you to kind of build out whatever you need to with PDQ Connect's API. But yeah, that's gonna do it. So we're not gonna dive into getting started, like really like making the connection to the API and all that stuff. That's beyond the scope of this video. But we will have a couple links down in the description for you below. Uh, I believe a knowledge base article as well as a webcast where we kind of went through the entire process using PowerShell to connect and manipulate the API, okay? So definitely go check those out. If you're new to APIs, they'll walk you through the entire thing, make sure you're connected, show you how to, uh, to generate those API keys and get you off 
to the races. So uh, that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe for more PDQ content. As always, if you have questions, hit us up down in the comments down below or head over to our Discord channel where we would love to hear from you. For PDQ, I'm Brock. Thanks for watching.